In this video, I wanna talk about everything that is involved with catching bass in the month of March. Now, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, I do not love the monthly bass fishing videos that you see everywhere across the internet. One, I don't love them because you see them all over the place, and two, because depending on where you live in the country, it can be vastly different how you go out there and catch a bass. Now, with that being said, I've been told at like the shows that I've gone to and even in the comments that people actually do love these videos. So I'm going to start kind of doing more of them over on this channel. And so in this video, when it comes to the, the month of March, we're gonna talk about where you can locate these fish and we're also gonna talk about what you can throw at these fish to catch them. Now, real quick, before we get into the video, this one is brought to you by my apparel company, Finn Fishing. I'm running a really unique sale for the month of March. If you buy one of my USA made sun shirts, you can actually get a bass hat for 50% off. The bass hat that comes with a wooden patch right here. So buy a USA made sun shirt, get the hat for 50% off. All you got to do is add the, the sun shirt that you like to cart, add the hat that you like to cart. It will automatically discount at check out and it really helps support this channel. All right, let's talk about the month of March. And the biggest thing that I want to talk about on the front end is what does March actually look like for where you live in the country? Now, if you live up north, you know, and even in the Midwest, you're dealing with a lot of very cold end of the winter type conditions. You know, this, this particular year is a little bit different because we've had a warmer weather like across the US and even in places that usually are really frozen up still for like another couple months are not frozen. Places like Minnesota and Michigan, like a lot of these places don't even have ice on them right now. So the cool thing is that a lot of those anglers, those Northern anglers who haven't been able to fish in the month of March before because, well, they haven't been able to open water fish anyways, they can actually get out there and do a little, little bit of fishing. And, and if you're living in the Midwest, you know, kind of like where I live in Ohio, this is a big transition month because at the beginning of March, we're usually dealing with, you know, coming out of winter. And by the end of the month, usually we're like into the pre-spawn. Now, as you work your way down South, you're going to run into a lot of states that are dealing with late winter pre-spawn or early pre-spawn type conditions. And then if you get way down South, you're gonna have fish that are on beds. So that's what it kind of looks like throughout the US right now. So with that being said, the two main things that you're gonna see is late winter bass, pre-spawn fish, and fish that are on beds. And that, and so I'm gonna talk a little bit about each of those in this video. So hopefully I can kind of hit on what, whatever you're experiencing right now. So for me, you know, we're dealing with kind of this late winter stuff. So one of the biggest things that I like to look for when it comes to late winter fishing is really clear water is not really clear water is, is, is clean water. I want to find typically water that is a little bit cleaner because when I am fishing in water temps that are 41, 42, 43, anywhere in the forties, the cleaner water tends to help you to get a couple more bites than that muddier water. Now, later in the day and later in the month of March, I will really start to seek out muddy water. When, when, the, when the water temps start to get into the 50s, mid 50s, you know, later in the day, we, I just talked about this in another video. That's when I really like to seek out muddy water because I have found a lot of times that muddy water will position really big fish that don't normally bite in really shallow water where you can easily get to them and easily catch them. And typically you're able to catch them on fast moving lures like chatterbaits and spinnerbaits and square bills. Now in the, in the late um, winter, like I'm dealing with now when I'm looking for clean water, there's two main lures that I use a lot. Now one is that Berkeley uh, or sorry, one is a jerk bait of some sort. Now I do use a Berkley Stunna a lot. I talked about that a little bit recently. That's one of my favorite jerk baits, period. And I will leave a link for all the lures that I talk about in this video if you guys wanna check them out. And another bait that I use a lot this time of the year is a blade bait. If you are able to fish a blade bait, I mean, I mean the coldest water that you will experience you can catch them really well with that blade bait. And you're gonna cast that bait out, you're gonna let it fall to the bottom, you're gonna work it really, really slow. Now, 
when I'm fishing a blade bait, I'm kind of fishing it a lot of times in those winter type areas. When I'm fishing a jerk bait, it's re really when fish are starting to move up. When that water's kind of getting in the upper 40s, fish are kind of coming out of their winter haunts and moving up on kind of their, their first areas that they move up to, that's a lot of times where I'm gonna pick up that jerk bait. Now, I have found out that with a jerk bait, specifically in clear water, that bass will come up a pretty far distance to get that bait. And I never really understood this until I had forward facing sonar, but whether you have forward facing sonar or not, you can still apply some of this knowledge. And so anytime that I'm fishing in less than about 15, 16 foot of water, I have no problem throwing that Berkeley Stunna. I usually throw the plus one. It gets down to about seven foot deep. And I love that particular bait. And I have seen fish come seven, eight feet up off the bottom to get that bait. So if I'm fishing in 15, 16 foot of water, I feel that I'm covering the entire water column. If you have some fish that are suspended two or three foot off the bottom, they're still gonna come up and get that bait. If you have fish that are on the bottom, they will still come up and get that bait. So that's, I use a jerk bait a lot this time of year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna count it down or I'm gonna reel it down. I'm gonna pop it a couple times, usually very softly, and then I'm gonna let it sit. And I, usually I'm gonna count while I let it sit to see how long it is before a fish hits it. Cause sometimes they, they, they're gonna wait before they hit it. They're gonna wait two, three, four seconds. So another great bait is simply a Ned rig. A Ned rig is, I mean, it's, a Ned rig is great no matter what, but it's also, but it's a very good cold water bait because it's simply so small. There's nothing to it. It's just like a little French fry down there. When the bass are kind of cold and coming out of their winter, not that they get cold, but then when they're very lethargic and they're kind of coming out, I think that that little Ned rig um, is just a bait that that is just an easy meal for them. They don't have to, they don't have to work too hard to get it. As a matter of fact, last year, the very first fish that I caught in March, as a matter of fact, made me think about this, was on a net rig. So a net rig is always a great one. Now I wanna talk a little bit now about the pre, like really getting into pre-spawn. Now pre-spawn, to me, a lot of times is is going to depend a little bit on the, the moon, it's gonna, it's going to depend a little bit on the length of day. Uh, a lot of times this is water temperatures that are getting kind of into the upper 40s to 60. You know, this is, you know, a, a big range, but it's it, this to me is one of the best times of year to go out there and go fishing because you can catch fish that are staging that are schooled up, getting ready to push up to spawn. You can catch fish in really shallow water that are actually kind of looking and seeking beds. So it's just a really fun time of year to be out. And if I'm being 100% honest with you, you can catch them on so many different lures during the pre-spawn, so many different lures. The biggest thing that I like to do is use moving baits during the pre-spawn because bass, Bass do know, especially the, the, the males and females, they know that they're not going to feed for a while, especially male bass. Male bass do not eat while they are guarding eggs and guarding fry. And so that can be a several week long period. So they're, they're biting, they're biting a lot. And females, you know, they're not gonna be on the beds for a long, long time. I mean, depending on where you live in the country, some, some females will, will lay eggs and, and they'll actually lay eggs on several different beds. One female will lay eggs on several different beds, but that's not always a long period of time. They might be up for three, four days and then they're done. And then they can kind of go back to feeding. But there are times where they, they are in, in shallow water and they're not feeding for over a week. And so it, during the pre-spawn, I like moving lures. I like bright colored lures. We've talked a lot about that. Your reds, your pinks. These are great times of the year to use this particular color. And I like to just incorporate it in a lot of the baits that I throw. You know, one of my absolute favorite baits is a spinner bait, a good old spinner bait. You know, uh, a, a chatter bait is another phenomenal one. Um, a lipless crankbait is another great one. Um, and guys, there's so many different brands that work with all these, these particular baits. You know, there's no one certain brand that I'm always going to, except for I do like a jackhammer chatter bait. It's just something that I've gone 
and, and fished a whole lot. Um, I've, I also do like the Berkley Power Blade. That spinner bait to me is one of my favorites right now. Um, if I'm if I'm using a, a single Colorado blade, um, I do like the Booyah spinner bait as well. The Booyah Covert Series spinner bait. The ones there's one that has a red head on it, and I'll leave it like down below as well. I really like that particular bait a lot in that pre spawn. And with those baits, a lot of times I'm just concentrating on shallow cover. I'm looking for grass beds that are outside of spawning flats. I'm looking for stumps and, and, and brush piles and laydowns and docks that are really close to these spawning areas because a lot of times those last pieces of cover are going to be where these fish kind of push up on and kind of wait. They kind of stage before they actually go up to spawn. So those are, the, those are the lures that I absolutely love to throw. Now, there is one bait, you know, like I said, I typically am throwing moving baits a lot. Um, this is also, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot this. This is one of the best times to go throw those big swim baits. This truly, truly is. If you guys have not gotten into swim bait fishing, this is a time that I highly suggest it because the fish are a, a lot more committal during the pre-spawn. They, the, during the, during the, post spawn is also can be really good but during the summer you know sometimes guys they, they start to read up on techniques and start to get into bass fishing in june in may and june and sometimes that really big swim bait bite starts to die off a little bit in may and june but anyways during the pre-spawn man six inch mag draft swim bait Ugh, you gotta throw it Throw it in the exact same places that you threw your spinner bait and your chatter bait. Instead of throwing those baits, even though I just talked about how they are good ones, throw that mag draft instead. I'm telling you, you will be addicted once you start catching fish on it. It is so much fun. Another good one is the, the Berkeley Call Shad. I have just very little experience with that bait though right now. So I'm gonna do a full review on some of the, the six inch style swim baits here and on the Bass Fishing HQ channel and probably the next, I don't know, week or so. But anyways, those are great times. Another great bait to throw if you're in the, in the glide bait fishing is, is just the Spro <clears throat> Chad Shad bait. That to me, that is my like baby when it comes to glide baits. I'm not a huge glide bait fisherman. Like I know that there are swim bait fishermen on this that know a lot more than I do, but those ones I trust and they get bit, man, they get a lot of bites. And when you're trying to learn a technique, it's just good to go out there and get bit. The Chad Chad, the mega, the mega bass mag draft, those are great little baits. Now, one real quick before I let you guys go, I just want to talk quickly about as those fish get up on the beds, because if you live down in South, you're probably experiencing fish that are actually on beds. Now, obviously there's, there's people that like to bed fish and there's people that are really against it. You know, and if you look at, I've looked at a lot of scientific data on this and it's a little bit all over the place. If I'm being 100% honest, honest with you, there's a lot of fisheries where catching bass on beds. I'd say the majority of fisheries, it does not hurt the bass population in any ways. And, and you gotta, and the thing that you gotta remember, this is actually why female bass spawn with multiple mates. Well, they don't know this for a fact, but this is what they believe because the female, they go up, they spawn with multiple males because they think that they know that one of those males might just not do his job, right? One of those males may not guard the fry and the eggs the way that it's supposed to. So they'll spawn with multiple males so that, so that they, the likelihood of their eggs hatching and surviving go up. Now, with that being said, they will drop thousands and thousands of eggs and literally it is, it's under a percent. It's, it's a very small amount that even survive to, to adulthood. And so that's why catching a bass off of a bed in a lot of fisheries, it doesn't really matter because even if all those eggs got eaten in the, in the few moments while that fish is off the bed by a bluegill or, or, or something like that, it's, it's not going to make a big difference in the long run, if that makes sense. So anyways, with that being said, there also are a few um, particular bodies of water, smaller bodies of water, maybe not high as um, bass populations, uh, ones that have gobies in them. You know, lakes that have gobies, if you take those, those fish off of the, um, 
off of the bed, those gobies will completely kill those eggs in like no time. Now, the on the flip side of that statement is that most of the fisheries that have gobies in them, at least right now, are like Great Lakes region. And most of those fisheries have billions of bass on them. So if you catch one five pound smallmouth off of a bed in Lake Erie, it's not gonna do anything, okay? So anyways, I'm just trying to say that when the fish go up and, and, and start to bed, some people like to fish for them, some people don't. I love bed fishing. And I'm gonna do a full video at some point on this video, on this channel about bed fishing. But when you can't see them, you'd be surprised at how many bass you still are catching on beds. And, I, and I've never really understood, um, I've never understood guys who are really against bed fishing, but they still go and fish during the spawning season because a lot of times the fish that they catch just flipping and pitching around, those fish are on beds. So it's not like, you know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're still catching fish that are on beds. They just can't visibly see them. So anyways, a lot of times plastics are going to be the deal. I've gotten a lot into fishing a Nico rig, you know, just a round cover and just really dragging it slow through this time of the year, you know, a round cover that I think bass could be potentially spawning on. Nico rig, usually I'm using a robo worm, a six inch fat robo worm, worm, margarita mutilator, one of my favorite colors. And that's a great little bait to throw a little bit of anywhere and you're gonna catch a lot of bass. Also your standard wacky rig. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you are still here, please let me know down in the comments if you like these videos or not. And I will see you guys tomorrow.